almost fell asleep during the clap then. Oh, well, I think you said hit record and then just started yawning. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long week. I'm very tired today. It's been a long week, and it's only fucking Tuesday. <laughs> oh, how are you? I am good. That's a shame. Well, I mean, you're not having to fight your way through protesters to get to work. Wait, what? what, what? Yeah, Extinction it's Rebellion. Climate change, Preston. Yeah, yeah. Protesting. Sorry, that, that wasn't a word. All oh, right. Why aren't you? Um, why aren't you man in the barricades? Why aren't you? You joining in? Because I've got a job. <laughs> Don't you want to save the planet? I mean, I get. I take public transport. That's. I'm doing my bit. <laughs> Do you know what, I saw a really good tweet the other day, actually, and it was about that, um, I, I'm going to absolutely massacre the pronunciation of her name, but that um, Greta Thunberg, that's me having a go, you know, hands across the ocean, isn't it? Um, and someone tweeted saying, hey, isn't it cool that, like, some people are like, hey, let's save the world, and then there are the other people that go, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not here to talk about climate change. We're here to talk about quite frankly a really fucking weird film yeah <laughs> yeah no it is weird so I mean I've known you for a little while I think you quite like Lord of the Rings so you should like everything Peter Jackson's ever done in my book that's how things work as far as I'm concerned I mean it's it's different when he's had the whole concept like Lord of the Rings was given to him on a plate all he had to do was go ooh New Zealand's pretty <laughs> I think there was a bit more work involved in Lord of the Rings than... Ooh, <laughs> I don't do. know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe. Well, no, he had to find the right cast. Yeah, that only took, what, 20 minutes, I reckon? 20 minutes tops? Well, I reckon you Google Gandalf and you just see pictures of Ian McKellen, so <laughs> that was pretty easy. You know, Google wasn't really a thing. <laughs> Not really. Do you know what I remember, actually? Yeah, while the Lord of the Rings films were coming out in cinemas and stuff, that was just as I was starting to understand what the internet was. And I remember Lord of the Rings, like, the the website of the film, didn't have a, a, a .com. It was a Lord of the Rings .net. Yeah. That's the end of my story. And there was, a Harry story. Potter, there was a Harry Potter um, website where... There was like a flash game where you played the keeper, um, and you had to like defend the three hoops, and then you had the, a chaser coming towards you. It was like a penalty shootout, and they'd throw throw the quaffle, and you had to move the mouse to control your keeper and block the shot. And if you if you press spacebar, he did a little front flip. It was fucking awesome. No, it's pretty. I remember uh, weirdly rem- trying to remember the time where Lord of the Rings was coming out. Just reminds me of playing Spyro. I don't know why. Well, probably because at the time that they were coming out, you were playing Spyro? Probably, but it's weird because I've been playing Spyro again recently. And it looks a lot better. Yeah. Like, the thing is, I still remembered pretty much everything from the first game. I, I was talking to some of the dude, dude lads. Uh, we, ha- I mean, we had a group chat that pretty much got taken over by Spyro. But I finished the game in like six and a half hours to like mm. absolute completion. There was actually nothing left for me to do in that game. <laughs> what in all three of them? Oh no, I've still got the third, this se- second and third. Okay. Because they learnt that if you make people have to go back to the earlier levels, the game takes longer. <laughs> Bastards. Ah, see, Spyro Two was my thing, not the first one. Where is my mouse? My cursor has disappeared. There it is. Uh, yes, so, Peter Jackson, shall we run down the list? Let's run down the list of films that he's done that you've seen. Ready? Yes. Bad Taste. Have you seen Bad Taste? Yes. That's lucky. <laughs> uh, meet the free, meet, meet the Feebles. Or the freebies. Meet the Feebles. No. Me neither. Have you seen Brain Dead? <laughs> No, I'm getting a real theme here. <laughs> you you have to see Brain Dead. I have actually seen Brain Dead, and it is fucking brilliant. It was f- I've got a funny feeling that uh, for a short time, it had used the most blood and gore in a film ever. I think that's impressive because Quentin Tarantino is a person. 
No, no, but like the room was filled with blood. Oh, <laughs> that's it, cheating. The um, the final sort of set piece is um, there's a chap who's in a, a house, and he's got zombies surrounding him and all coming towards him, and he's got a fucking lawnmower, and he just picks it up and shoves them into. This, it's so fucking. Oh, I need to watch that again. It's Halloween coming up soon. I'm watching Brain Dead. Uh, Heavenly Creatures. No. <laughs> Me neither. Forgotten Silver. No. <laughs> Me neither. The Frighteners. No. The Frighteners is fucking great. It's really, really good. It was um, is I think it was Michael J. Fox's last, last performance before he um, before he succumbed to uh, his Parkinson's, isn't it? I'm oh. really quite sad. Um, there's the, the, the three little films that I, I doubt you'd have seen them. Uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I mean, I haven't seen them this week. <laughs> uh, King Kong. Uh, no, actually. Have you not seen his King Kong? No. Andy Serkis is amazing in that. Andy Serkis is amazing in everything he's in. I mean, that is true. Um, the Lovely Bones. No. I remember when that came out, because that was when I was just starting to get into uh, the Kermit and film podcast. Uh, the Hobbit. Yes. The, my... the three Hobbit movies, I know you've seen them. Uh, oh, it says he wasn't a director on Tintin. I oh, know, uh, Spielberg directed Tintin. He was a producer, wasn't he? That was it. They Shall Not Grow Old. No. Oh, I thought you'd, that would have been something you'd have gone for. Right. Uh, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Oh, it's a documentary about World War One. They recolored and retouched up all the footage. I think I, I remember wanting to watch that, and then I didn't. I think it was um, it was well, on telly. Netflix. I thought it was. It's on Netflix now, isn't it? Is it? Maybe. I might have, I might have to give that a watch. Actually. And it says Mortal Engines. He didn't actually direct. I really thought he did. I mean, I haven't seen it anyway. Directed by oh no, Christian Rivers. No, he's a producer. Okay, well either way. There you go. So those are the you've the only ones of his you've seen are Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and Bad Taste. <laughs> I really don't see what the problem is there. No, no, nothing, no, not at all, not at all. I Should feel like get... I've seen the best and worst that he's got to offer. <laughs> <laughs> the best sure. being the Lord of the Rings and the worst possibly being The Hobbit. <laughs> I think we should start talking about Bad Taste. I mean, the title's half right. <laughs> <laughs> what taste? Right, as a I, I, okay, the, so the story of um, bad taste is. Uh, did you get this joke? There is the, the Astro Investigation Defense Service AIDS. Did you get that? Yeah, it's very, I got it's that. Very very funny. Very very clever. They send uh, these four chaps down to investigate this town because the the entire population of this town called was it Kai Horo. Uh, yeah, it almost sounds like even if you're just trying to say the name of the place, you're trying to do an accent. <laughs> oh yeah, car horror. No, that's not Australian. I can't do it. I don't know. The, I don't really know the um, the nuances in, in differences of cadence between Australian and New Zealand accents. So, well, I mean, for I'm me, sure. no, I just have a South Pacific <laughs> generic accent. <laughs> generic Antip- Ap- Antipodean. <laughs> yeah, generic. Uh, where we sent the criminals accent. <laughs> oh no. Oh dear. Where's that racist alarm? Well, it's not racist, it's uh, historically accurate, somewhat. Pump right. Brexit. So, these chaps, they go down and they discover that they're a bunch of fucking aliens. Or, but they, they, they very quickly come to the conclusion oh shit, they're aliens, and they look very much human. And they're all wearing blue shirts, which is like convenient for a low budget movie. Um, yeah, I noticed that they just sort of go. I think maybe they want them to be aliens because they keep making reference to the fact that occasionally they just kill a bunch of innocent people so maybe it would be nice if they got a win <laughs> um, and basically the, the, the story's pretty much there isn't it it's just that's it they go down there are these aliens suddenly they've got to survive and they decide okay well we're going to kill these aliens um one of the guys is captured and he wakes up in a, a barrel of water that's got a load of veg in it as well and, he, and they're about to um, turn him into a stew. Yeah, uh, that's the guy who they never 
he's a charity collector or something, isn't he? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and it's conf- I can't remember what the, it was. The acronym was Bread, but I can't remember what. Because mm. it was on like I, one I of the little bags, and it was spelled out. But he tore a bit off it and made it into a dog collar, and I was like, I think this guy's shady. <laughs> I hope he gets killed by an alien. <laughs> Uh, but, oh, and that, that's that, yeah. That, so one of the chaps, Derek, is on top of a cliff and he's looking down um, at the edge. And then an alien chases him and he falls off a cliff and smacks his head on a rock. And th- that is one of my favourite bits of the whole film. Is that the the running joke that he has to keep putting his brain back in his back in his skull. And then when he loses a bit, he just finds a different bit of brain and stuffs that in. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes fucking nuts. So. I like that. Yeah, I think... The thing, I, I thought he was going to end up with just, like, the scarf tied around his head. Like, as soon as he was, like, pushing, like, the flap back up, I was just like, will you just fucking tie up your scarf? And about an hour later... He does. <laughs> he, well, he, he, he goes, oh, I've got a belt. That'll hold my brain in. <laughs> um, so then the other three chaps um, discover that the aliens are hiding out in a house. Um... Which later it, it turns out the house is a spaceship. And do you know what? When I was a kid, I can't tell you the number of times that I had that sort of. I imagined that scenario. It's like, oh, what if the house just started fucking flying and it's like we're just going through space and, you know, it's like a massive TARDIS. But, so that, that actually that filled a, 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 a childish sort of desire of mine to see a house fly through space. So, like, yeah, that'll fucking do. I suppose, yeah, because in Doctor Who, they all, the house is always just decloak and turn into spaceships. They're not just flying houses. I just always find it so sad when just be like, oh, I'm just leaning out the back door, and where are we? Oh, yeah, there's France. Um, I feel like your spaceship goals are <laughs> very low budget. Well, I think <laughs> just that's up, why... there's France. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that's why I, I like the idea of mortal engines so much. Like the whole okay, well the city has been put on wheels and the cities are being driven across the country. I, I find that I don't know why that the idea of you know non-vehicular things driving or flying around. I, I find that really satisfying. I don't really. What fully I'm hearing is why. that you'd like to move around more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, that got real, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the solution to that is move to London. No, because there's beer on every street corner in London. So I will just walk to, from pub to pub. Yeah, really not seeing the problem. <laughs> Unless I'm not invited, in which case, fuck you. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so before the, the house takes off... Um, I was a bit. One of the one of the the guys infiltrates the house, and he just he's trying to pass himself off as an alien, and they pass around this bowl of vomit that um, one of the chaps pukes into, and it, in an attempt to sort of maintain his disguise, he actually eats some of the puke. And he's like, oh, oh god, oh it's disgusting, and they're like, oh shit, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't tell if he drank it and then went for a second swig or if he drank it and then sort of spat it back in but looked like he was having a second swig I couldn't tell I think he genuinely was like surprised with how nice it tasted and went for a second bite of the cherry yeah Um, so he's a cannibal now yes because it's all digested people that's the least of his worries by the end of this Um, and then basically it just it ends in a sort of a, a full scale assault on this house one of the chaps has a rocket launcher some fucking reason he just brings out a um, a rocket launcher the, the humans transform into their alien selves and I actually don't think the aliens look too bad like it's quite schlocky and it's they're very Doctor Who yeah but that's absolutely fine for the budget for the budget that they had 25 grand I think they did really fucking well with it I really like I, because there's a lot of flourishes with the camera and really interesting edits and stuff that I think that's you know you, you have to look past some of the the slightly dodgy effects and just think oh fair play this guy he, he's made this film in his hometown in his time you know spare time yeah well I mean I think they put all of the budget into making the house fly 
Yeah, that's true. So really, there wasn't a lot of money left for anything else. And aliens have a high daily rate. <laughs> well, you got to pay for that. You know, they got to come down. You got to pay for their oxygen because obviously their lungs work differently. To I mean, yeah, it's it's mostly the commute. It's a dear do. It is a dear do. Yeah, they're just lucky that the house, the lodging, just doubled up as the transport. Yeah, just do you want to come up? Come up. We'll make a film. We'll make a film, and then uh, yeah, you can just take the house because we don't need it anymore. We don't need space travel. <laughs> also, one we've of the got best imaginations. Bits, one of the best bits of this film is when uh, is, is it Derek who he grabs a chainsaw and he cuts like an actual you know like in Looney Tunes. Oh yeah, no, when he cuts the hole, <laughs> cuts the... through a wall. Sorry, I love that. He cuts I'd almost, out the I'd almost forgot the about it. Yeah. That's so fucking good. Um, so yeah, the, the spaceship takes off um, with Derek still on it. Derek goes and kills the lead alien, Lord Crumb, and uh, he gets the phone, which presumably is he's got. They've got a direct line to the alien home planet. He goes, "I'm coming to get you, bastards!" <laughs> and that's the end. It's yeah. fucking great. I really like this. Like I, I really like B movie sort of schlocky shit like this. So go on, it's just you, really think? fun. Like, the, it's not a complicated film, and I like that because <laughs> I'm not a complicated person. I mean, I yeah, like, well, like I said, it's I find it amazing. Like, obviously now everyone's got phones and stuff, so they've got you know a camera and an edit suite in their pocket. But doing this in the... What was it? The, it was 1987 when they did this. It was. It really is an example of... Look, we just got a bunch of mates together and made this fucking thing. And, I mean, look where he fucking landed him. He's now worth a shit ton of money. And he's made some wicked films. Yeah, what I love is that his... Like, the stuff that he did on Lord of the Rings, like the special effects in that revolutionised special effects... But then you look at this film and just go, how is this the same person? <laughs> well, I've been I separated by 12 years, but... <laughs> I, I think special effects and particularly, you know, gore effects have been... In, like, well, like I said, with Brain Dead, you know, that's him doubling down on, on the horror thing. But he has been a pioneer of special effects pretty much with every, every big film he's done. Like, Lord of the Rings, obviously, you got... A major advance. Yeah, they threw CGI. a lot of money at it as well. King King Kong in performance capture. The lovely bones. Actually, I've not seen it, but I've heard that the sequences where you actually see heaven is like spectacular. The Hobbit. He did the high frame rate of the three D stuff. And yeah, they uh, shall not grow up. Okay, let's not forget in the Hobbit film he also just like they just shoehorned in some fucking GoPro footage. Yeah, that is that is shocking. Like the Hobbit, while like yeah, I mean I like the first one. That's probably it. Yeah. Well, I think. I mean, not it's just. I mean, we're never going to get to talk about the Hobbit on this, so I've just got to get it out now. <laughs> like that scene in the third Hobbit where Legolas is just a weightless. Yeah, he's flying. Just ruins that film for me. Like, I actually quite like Battle of the Five Armies because it's oh, yeah. just a fight and it's got Billy Connolly. <laughs> oh God, I forgot he was in that. To be fair, I think Five Armies was ruined for me because that was the, at the time that I worked at the, um, the film you, company yeah, in London. Didn't you have to watch it like six or seven times? Uh, four times. I didn't have to. I chose to because I was too scared to do anything else because I, I was, you know, a little country bumpkin and I, I was in the office and I was like, oh, well, I really should be doing some shit. And I was like, there's nothing really to do. So I just went and said, oh, do you mind if I sit in on the, the quality control session in their, like, underground cinema? And, and you like, didn't yeah, sure. get them to take that scene out. <laughs> <laughs> All they did was put subtitles on, right? They didn't have any say in editing the actual film. Yeah, but, but they I, could have accidentally not subtitled that film and cut it out. Subtitle that film, uh, that scene. <laughs> that has no talking in anyway. Um, so I, so I, I got the impression you didn't really like Bad Taste, but now I'm starting to think you, you liked it more than you, would, you were letting on. Well, I mean, I think... It is fun like I think maybe it was a bit longer than I would have liked it's not it's not it's, overly long I mean it's down, only 90 it? minutes but there's nothing <laughs> I it does it does feel 
long. It, it feels, feels yeah, longer it than feels it like, is. It feels like 90 minutes. Yeah. I'd say it feels a little bit longer, actually, because I think yeah. we're used to faster editing and, you know, there's, there's not really a hugely dynamic plot-driven narrative, is it? Oh, fucking aliens are there. Let's go get them. And there's little set pieces which are quite nice, but there's no sort of... The, the overarching narrative is there are some aliens, let's get rid of the aliens. There's not really, okay, we have to do this, to do this, to do this, to do this. Yeah, and I mean, I, I quite like the, just the small... Like, just how small the cast was and stuff as well. Like, yeah. you, they just went, here are four characters. One of them's broken now, so you're just going to have to deal with that. And, like... It was good, like, the all the fight scenes were fun because the hero characters were invincible until it was important that they weren't. Yeah. Oh, no. Because, like, just all, read... a lot of the fight scenes remind me of, like... You know, like, the old Sly Stallone Arnold Schwarzenegger films where, for no reason, nothing can fucking hit them because they're fighting stormtroopers? Yeah. Like, that's what some of the fight scenes remind me of. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But then I, I, I just see this as just a huge love letter to, like, sci-fi and action films. I, I really liked it a lot more than I thought I did. Because when I first finished it, I was like, what the fuck am I doing watching this? I think, yeah, I think that's I how you feel it, for, like, the first 45 minutes. Yeah. And then you just kind of go... I'm just gonna see where this goes, and then you're like, oh, "The house is flying." <laughs> it's like up with blood. <laughs> it's up in reverse. The house starts flying at the end. <laughs> yeah, and I, I cried a lot more in bad taste than I did in up. So <laughs> I actually didn't cry watching up. I I didn't think it was Neither that did I, affecting. Because I'm a sociopath. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Or a psychopath. I'm one of the two. I'm a path. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I really like Bad Taste. Like, as an example of, like, fuck it, let's just get together and do something. It's a fucking really good example of that. Yeah, there's a little part of me that thinks we could make something like this. I genuinely don't think we could make anything anywhere near as good as that. But we could try. I mean, I'd, I'd happily give it a go. I mean, Nick and Amy have been bu bugging me to do some sort of filmmaking project for years so let's do bad taste too the house comes back <laughs> <laughs> just lands on peter jackson <laughs> uh yeah i i really like this and I, I really 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 do recommend brain dead and the frighteners they are particularly as halloween's coming oh actually when's this good when's this going out i think halloween's long gone by the time this comes out not long it? gone uh, oh yeah, it's it still comes. coming. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you want like a, because the Frighteners is is fairly dark, but it's you know a fairly tame family Halloween movie, I guess. Brain Dead maybe not so much. It's very very gory, and there's a lot of stuff about um, there's a, lot, a lot of Freud. I'll just say. Um, seriously, if you can if you can see Brain Dead or the Frighteners before Halloween, give them a go because they they are fucking great. That would be a nice change of pace from watching endless episodes of Suits. Oh, have you carried on watching Suits? I have. I will tell you where I am. Go on. This is, is this the new Gilmore Girls? Uh, I'm on season four, <laughs> episode 12. Fuck me. It's only been a week. Yeah, well, they're only... All right, so the seasons are only 15 or 16 episodes long, so it's not oh, that okay. bad. Oh, right. oh, and they're only 45 minutes episodes so uh, it's not too bad if you do nothing else ah oh, fair enough yeah we, we were watching Gilmore Girls earlier this evening actually it was the one with the mm. bells oh I love Gilmore Girls yeah it's pretty fucking good um I think that might hashtag be team for... dress <laughs> yes I think that about does it for bad taste uh I think it's it's good fun give it a watch but seriously, go and have a look at Brain Dead and the Frighteners. Yeah, They're ignore what I said great. about the title only being half right. <laughs> uh, what's next? We... Um, that is a good question. Um, just real quickly, before I say what the next one is, I might have a rethink 
we might not be doing the one that we're scheduled to do because I think that one's going to be an absolute ball ache. What to find? Yeah. Also, like sit through. It's, yeah. So we won't do that one. Um, we'll be back with a surprise Phil. special. We don't. Even, it's so secret. Even we don't know what it is. Wait, I've got an idea. Just what we can do it on air. It's fine. I'm no. gonna make. I'm gonna make a suggestion to you. Okay. No. <laughs> well, I was gonna suggest. I'm already nervous. Eagle versus shark. Who's who's is eagle versus shark? Hang on. Uh. Okay. Give me another one that they've done. Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Oh, I think it might be Taika Waititi. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll have a think. I'll have a think about um, which one we're going to do next. Okay, I mean, well, it's just because I thought we were doing a New Zealander today. And maybe we could just do another one. <laughs> Make it a theme. No, that's racist. Yeah. I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what we might. We might do Barry Jenkins, actually. Or maybe we'll do Barry Jenkins, because then I get to watch. I think it's Blue Mike, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it will be confirmed at a later date. Hopefully before we start recording. I mean, that would help. Oh, no, it's not Moonlight. It's for... Anyway, yes, so enjoy that. And on the other side, our other show, what are we doing? Uh, it is... Final Space and Futurama, is that right? Yes. Oh, do you know what? I watched Futurama the other day. I completely forgot we were doing it, and I watched the pilot the other day. So I will re-watch That's it. That's but... overly convenient. <laughs> Isn't it? So yeah, I look forward to doing that one. So I love future. I look yes. forward to watching Final Space as well. So yes, 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 yes. This has been fun. Yes. And now it must end, as all things will. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, my house is taking off. So bye. <laughs> Come back. <laughs>